And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Whew. Another one of those beautiful moments as we come into worship. Welcome, the Lord be with you. I think this is a great God is good all the time kind of morning. God is good. And all the time. God is good. And all the time. It is a joy to welcome all of us together into this time of worship. Those of us gathered here in this beautiful space, those of us who have the wonderful joy of being with us from wherever they happen to be this morning, we love the gift of technology and our wonderful online congregation. And of course, all those who will worship with us later in the week via YouTube and through the cable TV. Welcome, welcome. I am Pastor Teresa. I am part of the pastor team here with Pastor Paul, who's back in the tech booth this morning. It is a joy to welcome everyone because Central Church is a fully inclusive church. All are welcome here. I would love to have your names on that beautiful pew pad so that about midweek I spend time with those beautiful names, holding you all in prayer, going through the chats from the, the online worship to just wrap everyone in prayer for the week. So I hope that you will fill those out. And I'm also delighted to be here with Knud. Good morning, Knud. Good morning. And I will hand it over to you. <clears throat> Good morning, all. A beautiful, beautiful fall day. Uh, she's already introduced me, uh, Knud Hansen. Our music today, we've already, already been blessed by Sean and his masterful play on the piano keys. We will also have the Chancel Choir with our new choir director. Welcome. We will there be a formal introduction later. Roger will be helping out on some of the hymns on the organ. We welcome, uh, thanks the uh, tech booth. Uh, poor Mark is having to be frantically uh, go through things, a little shake up today, but uh, he'll make it all work, I'm sure, with, as, long as, as well as everyone else. And thankful to the usher team, if you need any help during the service, just reach out for Greg or Jackie, they'll help you out. Today is World Communion Sunday, so we would invite those of you at home uh, to grab a, a cracker or something, or some juice or something, and be ready for that when we get to that part of the service. Today is World Communion Sunday, and we have a short video to kick that off. Did you know, when you give to the World Communion Sunday offering, you support scholarships for graduate students seeking to serve the church, racial and ethnic leadership development programs for future church leaders, educational preparation for training and mentoring global mission partners, World Communion Sunday calls the church to model diversity among all God's children. On this special Sunday, United Methodist congregations globally join in Holy Communion and help students reach their full potential. Offerings collected on World Communion Sunday are used to fund scholarships for young scholars and seminarians. Donations are designated for the recruitment training and retention of ethnic United Methodist persons from around the world, both male and female, in leadership positions in every level of the church and its ministry. Your gift brings hope, and every gift makes an impact. Help us educate leadership for tomorrow. Give through your local church, by mail, or online at umc.org slash ssgive. Envelopes are in the back there and on the tables as you leave the sanctuary, so you've just been educated on why to give. Hopefully you can give. The Monday book study is postponed for this week. Saturday is the United Women of Faith Takeout Luncheon. Shelly is upset because there aren't many orders for food yet, and she wants to make a lot of food. <laughs> so there are order forms in the Welcome Center. 
She'll also be meeting you at the door on this side if you want to. Get an order for him. Order about six pints of chicken salad. Let me, <laughs> let me trust you, it's well worth it. And it'll last through the week, believe it or not. Or in my case, it may be a day. There are sandwiches, there's salad, there's soup, deviled eggs and cookies. So please, make Shelly happy, put her to work, and the rest of the, the women's team to prepare for that. Um, place your order, they need to buy tomorrow. Pickup is Saturday between 11 and 1, right? Okay. Other announcements. Uh, one of the local organizations is looking for suitcases and or duffel bags for their mission work. So if you have a extra suitcase or a duffel bag that is no longer in use, please bring it into the church office and uh, they'll, we'll make sure it gets to the right place. As you know, we've been having a mission program every month. This month it's October, which means bring in socks, put them in uh, by the office, and we will either get them into the clothing center or we'll get them to the UE school district, the kids that need them. According to the note in the bulletin, socks are one of the few things that are donated to, share, to clothing center, obviously, I guess. So new socks, bring them in. Another good mission outreach from, from Central. We need more singers in the choir. Denise needs more people ringing bells. Please, if you can, call the church office and let them know. They'll, I think the practices are Thursday nights, one before the other. So, um, and that just helps us all. If, if we can join the music of this church, that's a wonderful thing. There are other announcements in the bulletin. For those of you at home, I think you can access the bulletin through the church website or there's a QR code sometimes, the QR code's on the... Okay, thank you. We have spent the last five weeks with a particular worship series, Do Unto Others. As this series draws to a close, we may feel more or less resolved in our openness to each other. Loving our neighbors, including relatives, co-workers, acquaintances, strangers, as ourselves is no simple task. We need God. We need the love of God to show us mercy and strength to love as God loves. We need the story of Jesus, the one who loved across the lines that had been drawn in the society of his day, but who also stood up for the least and the lost. We need faith that no matter the strain of differing positions, policies, or politics, we will move forward in love. Disagreeing need not be antithetical to love and grace. And indeed, our world depends on all of us working for a better world filled with more kindness, compassion, humility, respect, and love. So on this final Sunday of our Do Unto Others series, let us sing verse one of Christ Has Broken Down the Wall. We'll remain seated for this, but we'll stand when we sing the second and third verses. invocation and a time for centering. The act of simply coming together is a revolutionary one, which in its earliest form meant finding a course around a central point. We gather around the light of Christ as the center and guiding light of our lives. This becomes our point of reference for our relationships and our love in the world. This is our love revolution. Let us pray. Loving and hope-filled God, we ask you to stay close in our lives as we move into an unknown future. 
Wrap us in your love and invite us to go, to do likewise, to do unto others in ways that build up each kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the center that holds, and in the power of the spirit that transforms. Amen. Let us center our hearts, minds, souls, and bodies on Jesus, who invites us into this time of worship as we sing two more verses of Christ Has Broken Down the Walls. peace of Christ, we have been echoing some of the conversations of divisiveness in our nation. And so we have a reader one and a reader two that are about to be on our screen. And this side will be reader one this week. And this side will be reader two. And then we'll come together with leader and people. Reader one, it has been an eye-opening experience to be here. What if it never happens? What if it gets harder? But I have begun to imagine a way to live together. I know we both are so great, but I wish you no harm. Wait. Wait. Breathe. Let us imagine this kind of outcome. Breathe again. We are not alone. Let us take a deep breath together, in and out. The rhythm of our breath and heartbeat is the same. Our desire for life and love is the same. Our desire for a peace in which we flourish is the same. Let this moment permeate our souls and let us pass the peace of Christ between us. This peace is meant for all people. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us exchange peace with one another and to our beloved church family who are worshiping remotely. And also with you. Peace, 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 peace. Yep. Don't sit. Don't sit down. Please join us in the hymn number three eighty four. Love divine, all loves excelling.
please be seated. Except for Carolyn. <laughs> I would like Carolyn Stanford to join me down front for a moment. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. And Carolyn has been our leader in our singing of the choir and just making sure that our music was just glorious for how many years? Ten. Ten years. And un yes, amen. <laughs> Woo! And she shared that it had come, become time for her to, to step down from that role, and we were very sad to see her go. And we wanted to make sure that we took a moment to simply express our gratitude and to make sure you knew how much we loved you. So we have a card, and we have a lovely lily, a peace lily, for you to take home. And every time you look at it, you will think of your beautiful choir and how much they love you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Would you join your heart with mine in prayer? God of grace, it is indeed a joy to, be, to have music fill us with your presence. Your spirit sings with us when music fills the space. And so we give thanks for the ministry of Carolyn, for all she has done to grace us with music, and we ask that you continue to bless her and to wrap her with our love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You are welcome. And you can, if you'd like to, we'll help you get that to your car later. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it's, it's heavier than I thought when I picked it up to bring it up front. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. Do you have anything you want to say or just, just thank you? Thank you, and I love you all. Thank you. It's been wonderful. Love you, <laughs> You're welcome. Make sure everyone gets this. Just express some gratitude at the end of the service. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. And I do want to make sure we take a moment to introduce um, the person who will step in as leader of the choir moving forward. If you would come up for just a moment, Jaron. We have the joy of welcoming with us Jaron Johnson. You may have heard him sing at Sherlin's service that we had just this past week. Um, so it was a wonderful way for him to begin his ministry by offering us his voice and his music. Jaron comes to us from Oregon, where he was getting his master's at, in music at the University of Oregon. And before that, he was at Northern Illinois University getting his bachelor's in music. And he has experience both in conducting and, of course, being part of um, wonderful choirs and groups. So I know you will all take a moment to welcome Jaron to Central Church. Thank you, Jaron. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, yes. And now you may bring your choir forward, and they shall offer us that beautiful gift of music. <laughs>
morning. morning. Jesus names us many times in scripture as neighbors to one another. We have been depending on his vision for the neighborliness of humanity as we navigate our own search for good news. Together, we will continue to find ways to tell deeply good news for all people by filtering our interactions through the lens of love. Today's scripture reminds us that interpretation of the law has always been difficult for humanity. We have never been of one mind, but as we have heard in this series, what we put into the world is part of the ongoing creation of the world. Is it possible to put love out there as always the first impulse for interpretation? Our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 40, and I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version updated edition. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, an expert in the law, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The word of God. <laughs> Would you join your heart with mine in prayer? Gracious God, may the words of our mouths the meditation of our hearts and our actions in service to the world be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight, our rock, our redeemer, our very definition of love. Amen. You'd think that people would have had enough of silly love songs, but I look around me and I see it isn't so. Some people want to fill the world with silly love songs. And what's wrong with that? I'd like to know. <laughs> Anyone know whose words I'm quoting this morning? Sir Paul McCartney. And we certainly do have an abundance of silly love songs out there. We could start naming them right now for the rest of the hour, and we would never come close to naming them all. But one of the things I love about those silly love songs is that so many of their titles are actually a proclamation about love. Love is a many splendored thing. Love lifts us up where we belong. All you need is love. In the name of love. And I was made for love and you, baby. Anyone else got love songs now going through your head? <laughs> love songs have to be a little silly. We are trying to put into words emotions that are crazy and overwhelming and extreme and ridiculous and beautiful and passionate. Metaphors fall short. Words miss the mark when we try to explain this crazy little thing called love. And so our attempts seem a little silly, and yet beautiful and necessary at the same time. However, all these wonderful, passionate, and silly love songs can complicate our understanding when we start talking about love and scripture and love and God and, like with our passage today, love of neighbor. I mean, does Jesus expect us to feel for God and for our neighbors whether they are family, friend, or strangers, in the same way that we talk about love in our silly love songs? I mean, there are times when we can say we feel love for God, especially when we're experiencing one of those beautiful, high, holy moments, a glorious sunset or sunrise, a really phenomenal worship service like today, breathtaking views of nature like mountaintops and beaches in the ocean, or life celebrations, like weddings and graduations and the birth of a child. But we have to admit that there are times when we struggle 
to feel love for the Holy One. The Holy One who is so big and so all-encompassing. The Holy One who feels distant sometimes and maybe even absent. And when it comes to loving our neighbors, well, we can certainly say we love those closest to us. We love our family. We love our friends. But loving strangers? Or harder yet, loving someone who we almost consider an enemy or at least adversarial. In this worship series that we've been journeying in for the past month, we have been focusing very much on the difficult neighbor, the one who doesn't see the world the way that we see it, the one who holds beliefs and opinions that we struggle to understand, let alone accept. And we've been wrestling with Jesus' teaching to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. And that call of scripture to be a people who treat everyone with kindness and compassion and respect through humility. And we've been doing all this in the midst of a contentious presidential election and in the midst of a deep divide between the red and the blue, the Republicans and the Democrats in our nation. And today is our last day in this worship series. And we end it with today's admonition from Jesus that love is the ultimate command. Love is the heart of God's teaching in Scripture. It is, as Jesus says, the summation of all the law and the prophets. We have before us today Jesus' insistence that loving God and loving neighbor are essentially the same command that in loving our neighbor, we are loving God. And if we seek to love God, we must love our neighbor. It's a beautiful command to read aloud, but it's a whole different thing to have to live it every day. But that is exactly what is happening in the passage before us today, a debate on how to live in a way that is loving toward God. Enter the Sadducees and the Pharisees. In Jesus' time, these were the two factions vying for power under the occupation of Rome in Israel. Political power and religious power were inseparable in ancient Israel. To be a religious leader was to be a political leader. And the Sadducees were the religious elite. They held much political power. And they were also the government for the people of Israel in cooperation with the Roman governors. The Sadducees were the Sanhedrin, the government council that ruled over the people. And they were the priestly class. They managed the life of the great temple in Jerusalem. And they believed that a faithful life was one that followed traditional Sabbath laws. Love of God was demonstrated through following tradition. And they were deeply invested in Rome to maintain their power. And they were opposed on every side by the Pharisees. The Pharisees didn't have priestly credentials to back them up. And therefore, they were not permitted management in the temple. However, the Pharisees were extremely well-educated in the law of God, and they believed that it was possible to live every piece of the extensive holiness codes that were in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, in everyday life. They even believed that they could live the portions of the holiness code reserved just for priests, the purity laws, that all of that could be part of their day-to-day -day living. The Pharisees believed that a pure life was the highest expression of love of God. They tried to instill their passion for purity in the hearts and lives of the ordinary people, the working poor in both urban and rural communities. And they believed those Sadducees had sold out to Rome and that by doing so they were unclean, impure, and unfit to rule the people. So our reading today steps into the middle of an encounter that Jesus is having in the temple precinct with both the Sadducees and the Pharisees, who, miracle of miracles, 
had set aside their differences for just a moment to unite for one goal, to attack the authority of this upstart Galilean rabbi who was causing them both trouble, Jesus. The two opposing groups have cornered Jesus in the temple and they are intent on exposing him as a fraud in front of all the crowds who have come to worship. The Pharisees begin with an attack about taxes and Jesus shuts it down. The Sadducees step up to bat and try to throw in a zinger about resurrection and belief and Jesus silences them. And now in today's reading, the Pharisees are up to bat again. And this time, they're not only seeking to trap Jesus, they're hoping to catch the Sadducees at the same time. Remember, these Pharisees believe that loving God is practicing holiness codes, the purity laws in everyday life, and they believe that if they can get Jesus to admit that loving God is the heart of the law of all the teachings, they can spring their trap and point out that Jesus does not practice love like they do. Jesus doesn't follow the purity laws, and neither do the Sadducees. Only the Pharisees, in their minds, have it right. So they whisper with one another for a minute, they get their question just right, and then they pose that question in a very leading manner. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? You see, there's a right answer, at least one that's agreed to by both Sadducees and Pharisees. And that right answer is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Jesus just needs to answer the right answer, and then they can jump to and point out that he doesn't practice all of the holiness codes to show his love for God. They will lift themselves up over Jesus and over the Sadducees. But Jesus doesn't answer the way they expect. He does indeed quote Deuteronomy 6, verse 5, but before the Pharisees can respond and jump in, he continues that Deuteronomy's proclamation must be paired with Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. What Jesus does in this moment is not completely original. Other rabbis have paired these two together, but it's very uncommon. And the Pharisees don't believe Jesus knows enough to know about that pairing. They certainly didn't expect him to answer with it. And so when Jesus did his response, he defined love of God not with purity laws, but with kindness and compassion for all the people one encounters day in and day out. The Pharisees can't argue with it. The Sadducees can't argue with it. It's scriptural, and other authorities have attested to it. This answer undercuts all of that divisiveness that was rising up, and both groups again have to come together and agree that Jesus is essentially correct. And it's the last time either group challenges Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. What is up for debate here, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, is not how a person or a group feel about God or about their neighbor. What is up for debate is how one acts toward God and ultimately how one behaves toward their fellow citizens on this planet. Love is an action in our biblical passages first and an emotion second. We are called to act toward the world in a way that is nurturing and caring and compassionate. And in, a way, and in that way, we demonstrate our love of God. That word for love in the Greek is agape, a word reserved for the highest form of love there is. And it's hard to put really a quick definition around it. In Hebrew, that same concept is chesed, and both words can be translated as love, but they usually come with other words attached. Steadfastness, loyalty, faithfulness, selflessness, and mercy. Both agape and chesed are a call to action and are always paired with kindness, compassion, humility, and respect. Words we have spent time with in worship on Sundays throughout this worship series. Agape and chesed call us to create a space in our day-to-day -day lives 
where people who are normally divided are welcome to come together to explore that which can unite us instead of focusing on what divides. And for this worship series, we have called this the purple space, where the red and the blue divide can come together. For when red and blue unite, they make purple. Today is World Communion Sunday. It is the ultimate purple space. All the world is welcome at this table, for this is Christ's table, and it does not belong to a certain group or denomination or region. Red and blue, progressive and conservative and moderate, Republican and Democrat and independents and non-affiliated and any other label that we use, at this table, the world sets aside the vast differences that seek to divide us, and we together heed Jesus' invitation. We come to the table with our hands empty, humbling ourselves before such simple elements, bread and fruit of the vine. This is the ultimate love song. This is the ultimate love song. For in this space, at this table, a table that mysteriously spans space and time, God acts out God's love for us, reminding us of the gift of Jesus, Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. At this table, we are one people, Beloveds of God, precious children created in God's image, breathed into with the Holy Spirit, breath of God, as Pastor Paul reminded us last week. <sighs> All are welcome at this table. That is the definition of love. All are welcome. All have enough. All come together. So let us come to the table. Amen. God of all creation, we hold in our hearts and minds this beautiful planet with potential for such abundance. And we pray for all your people, all your creation that dwell with us on Mother Earth. We pray for the frozen plains of ice that is Antarctica and the unique creatures that call it home. We pray for Australia, her people and creatures. We pray for the islands that surround the continent, New Zealand, Indonesia, Malaysia, just to name a few. We pray for the Asian nations, the people and wildlife that fill that vast region. We pray for people to reign, peace to reign across the Far East. China, Japan, North and South Korea, Thailand, India, and many more. We pray for Europe and the diversity of nations we pray for a spirit of cooperation and understanding, for a spirit of peace. Italy, England, France, Sweden, the Slavic nations, Ukraine, Russia, and many more. We pray for the Middle East and the areas of violence and poverty plaguing that region, praying for peace, praying for justice, praying for a release from the fear. Israel and Palestine, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Iraq, Iran, and many more. We pray for the continent of Africa, a vast land full of a multitude of nations and tribes. Too often we refer to Africa as if it were simply one nation, Help us to recognize the huge diversity of this beautiful continent and the vast needs of her people. We pray for Central and South America, 
and the rich heritage of her people and wildlife. We pray for areas of growth and development, areas of agriculture and livestock, areas of violence and poverty. And we pray for the continent of North America, remembering that our nation is not the only occupant of this region. But we do pray for our nation, for her people, her leaders, and the richness of this beautiful country. We pray for our neighbors. We pray for your world creating God and the contest between abundance and scarcity. May this World Communion Sunday help us to put you first and allow that focus to overflow in our relationship with your world. And now we join our voices together as one in the prayer that Jesus gifted to us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Move to a time of giving ourselves to God's purposes. We, are, we have been blessed so richly by God, and we are asked to be generous in return with our time and our talents. The Central Family has shown for 185 years its generosity to this community and to, through its mission to the world. And we ask to continue that. There are many ways to give our financial offerings. You can put your envelope in the boxes at either entrance of the sanctuary. You can mail a check in, you can deposit a check at church, you can do uh, electric fund transfer, or you can pay by online giving through the central website. Let us bless these gifts through our singing of hymn number 94, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. Let us pray. Bless our gifts and our giving, God of all the earth, all the cosmos. Send us and our gifts forth as a blessing to all the world. Amen. Actions create ripples of reactions. We move into the world praying that the result of our worshipful work will create actions of love that extend far beyond our knowing. Let's just see what can happen when we turn up the volume of kindness and treat others as we would hope to be treated. Let us do unto others with ever-deepening understanding that lasts far beyond this moment in history. Let us continue into the unknown future with hope that we can survive, we can thrive together, no matter the outcomes of a divided world. Let us sing our closing song as a way of beginning to ripple forth from here, spreading love to all. They'll know we are Christians by our love, number 2223 in the faith we sing, or on the screens.
May the Holy One show you the way to do unto others with love. May the Christ, whose light is the center of all that is, ground you in the assurance that no one is outside of love. May the Spirit show forth through you in extraordinary acts you never imagined you had the power to achieve. And may you know the peace that surpasses all understanding, especially when it is difficult to understand. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And now let us sing that final verse of Christ has broken down the wall for the last time. Let us go in peace into this beautiful day. Amen.